live. Good morning. Good morning. Today's sermons will come from Isaiah, chapter 6, verse 48, which last week. Give you opportunity to get there. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And as you recall, the title was Encountering God, and this is part two. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up. Chains filled the temple. His robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each had one six. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, 
and to his public speaking, and to his public space, and to who flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the servants flew to me, having in his hand a rod of gold, which he had taken with the bone to an altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sins heard. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go up to us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. The next voice you will hear is about will be King of Praise Ministry Choir, followed by the Pastor. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Put my hands together. If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Put your hands together. If you are grateful. If you are grateful. I know I'm saying it every Sunday that I'm grateful to be here, but you don't know what I go through on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. I know I'm not the only one that has struggled this week. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not the only one that struggled this week from back pain to people getting on my nerves just to have to work every day. Look. Adulting is ghetto. <laughs> I would not recommend it. I'm grateful. I am grateful to be here today. I'm grateful that God has allowed me to even be here and speak in front of you. Amen. I'm going to sing a simple song, and if y'all know it, sing along with me. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. I could go on and on and on about your words because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Flowing from my heart are the issues of my heart is gratefulness. Grateful, 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 grateful
grateful, 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 gratefulness. It's flowing from my heart, flowing from my heart. Are the issues of my heart flowing from my heart? Are the issues of my heart? It's gratefulness. students at uh, Baltimore School of Bible, put a plug in Baltimore School of Bible, amen, of Bible, <laughs> and I, we, we'll go through a passage of scripture, and I, I will teach that passage of scripture, and when I get done, the student that came with a, 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 a view of scripture that was not correct, after I'm teaching, and, and they say amen, I would say, what do you think about it now? Oh, I still feel it's the way I always thought it was. So I'm saying... You can read this, and we can study it, but still our minds are bent to what we want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're living in a world today, y'all, kind of, they've gotten a world who's denying the throne. Mm -hmm. But where is God when, some people say, where is God when 
my loved one dies? Where is God when tragedy is true? Where is God? We just had another shooting the other day. I didn't read the details about it. This is another shooting where seven, eight people got killed. Where is God when the streets are full with drugs and violence? Where is God? I want you to know where he is. He's still on the throne. Amen. He has not vacated the throne. He's not just, he's not on a seat. He's not in a chair in heaven. He is on the throne. The, the, the chair has never gone unoccupied. And Isaiah fought this message that we feel, people feel often, where if God is there, why is tragedy happening? Uh, Isaiah felt that the, the nation was going down because why? King Isaiah, who had been a good king, had now died, and now what? We're going to be in bad shape. Isaiah can also say, uh, Isaiah can also say that Isaiah uh, started strong but finished in a bad way. You know what happened to Isaiah? Isaiah I know I told you to read it, but you probably didn't read it. <laughs> in Second uh, Chronicles 26 and 1 Kings 15, the story of Isaiah is told. He was a king out of the few that did honor God and serve God. He was one of the few that served God until the end when he decided he didn't want to just be a king, he wanted to be a priest. And he tried to go in and offer what the priest is sent to go in and do what priests ought to do. The priest told him, don't do it. We raise a censer up to offer God struggled with leprosy. He had to leave out of his position and go into an isolated house by himself while his son took over his rulership. Here's a man who started strong. The Bible talks about he was strong as long as he depended on God. How many know we get kind of uppity sometimes? Can we get uppity? Some of us think we wake ourselves up. Some of us think the long pot woke up. Some of us take for granted Getting up out the bed in your own strength. God has some people looking at you right now can't do that. Mm. But all you got to do is go through a situation where you can't get around and you realize how much you appreciate when you can't get around. Yeah. Come on I don't want to go to the I've been there. I've been in a place where I shouldn't get around like I wanted to. Why well, I needed somebody to push me around. It's not a good feeling. But it lets you see, when you see people walking and living and breathing, it lets you see how good they have it, how good you had it. And didn't even realize it. How many want to give God a praise just being moved this morning? Some people right now, I had an experience in a dream the other day, and I know I don't, I don't put a lot of stock in dreams, but in this dream, I lost my mind. And I got a taste of what it must be not to be in control of your own mind. To know that something is wrong with you, but you don't have the power to do anything to bring it back. So I want to thank God right now for a sound mind. Go with that. Amen. I remember my son was out. He paralyzed from the waist down. We went into a room, and we had this meeting with these people who were getting along and, and doing life with their, their disabilities. Some had been shot. Some of, one man, he had to depend on somebody to wash him in the morning. He was a speaker, and we were there. It was like it could have been a really depressing type situation, but it made me aware of those with disabilities that I've never before because it's a whole other world when you go through these things. But where is God when these things happen? These people did not let right their disability stop them from living life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And sometimes God will allow stuff in your life not to harm you, but to make you. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Sometimes He will allow stuff in your life not to harm you, but to make you. But we are so small in our thinking. You got to remember what His throne is. God's on the throne, but He sits high. Mm -hmm. He was high, Isaiah said. He was high lifted up. What does that mean? That means that's not above him. Mm -hmm. That means he sees what you and I can't see. Mm -hmm. He can do what you and I cannot do. And sometimes God will, will take down stuff in your life. Anybody been there before? That you have made a rival in your own heart and life. Mm -hmm. That job. That child. That, that, that position. That title. Sometimes God will allow these things to go to see what you're really, so you can see what you're really made of. Amen. Amen. So where, where what was happening to Isaiah, he saw, he thought it was over for the nation because the king was God, but then the Lord showed him who the real king was. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And sometimes God will allow you to lose things so he can show you I am still on the throne. Yes. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Some of you, I know your story. I know you lost stuff. I know it seemed like it was over when you lost stuff. I know this, uh, uh, Things, uh, uh, what is it? When things happen to you that was not fair, I understand that. But you thought you missed those things. You thought, like Isaiah, you thought you were under, you thought your life was unraveling. But thanks be to God, you look back and realize God had a plan. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you look back and say, God was in control. 
some of the worst things that have happened in my life have been the best thing that ever happened to me. I know that sounds crazy, y'all, but I know y'all understand what they're Amen. Some of the things I thought was going to unravel me. Yes. Yes. Some of the things I thought I would never get over. Some of the emotional scars. That stuff that I thought I'd never get over. But you know what? When I look back, I realize that was the best thing that happened to me. Yeah. Same. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because you begin to examine yourself. You got to know. You got to know who you are in the sight of God. Because people are going to try to say all kinds of things about you. But do you know what God says about you? And I want you to notice that God's on the throne and and I want you to see the response of this great prophet of God. He must have gone out his day feeling like he was okay. He must have started his day like he was everything was good. He was God's servant, God's prophet. He was most likely living a godly life. He thought he had it together until he got into God's presence. Wow. And when he got into God's presence, guess what? He began to see himself like he was. Amen. Amen. And you can tell someone who has an account with God because they have a good assessment of who they are. Mm -hmm. Those the minute of God's presence had an account with God, no, I'm only who I am by the grace of God. If you, you see anything coming out of my life, it's because God has done it. If you see me going in a different direction, it's because God has done it. If you see me growing, it's because God has done it. If you see a way he made out of nowhere, it's because God has done it. I take no credit for it. Yeah. For a degree, for education, for position. God, here I come, I say God has done it. God has done it. The only reason why you're here right now, you're not here right now, because God's on the throne. Amen. And where he sits, high he lifted up. He, he sees stuff we can't see. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We think that life is unraveling. I think about the song, I Won't Complain, it's full of complaints. <laughs> <laughs> don't complain about it. Amen. I don't want to complain about the song either. <laughs> full of complaints, I won't complain. No money in the bank, no food, but I won't complain. What you doing? Anyway, y'all can hear this song again the same way. <laughs> a song I won't complain, full of complaints. Amen. But I think about that. We're full of complaints, although God has, our good days have outweighed. Come on now, somebody. Yeah. Our good yeah. days have outweighed our bad days. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. We got to sometimes take a walk. You know what the Bible said here? It said the whole earth is full of his glory. In that text. God, the whole, the angel of Abraham said the whole earth is full of his glory. You look around, you say, I don't see I see crime, I see this, I see that. But have you taken the time to look up and see the heavens sometimes? Have you taken the time to see a sunrise? Have you taken the time to look out on the water when the sun is rising on it? Have you taken the time to examine some of the creatures God has made and the detail he's placed in them? Have you taken the time to see these things? The whole earth is full of the glory, but men are walking around with blinders on them. Mm -hmm. Because if we can see God's glory, we will complain less. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God has blessed us more than any of us could ever deserve. When Isaiah thought he had to get to God in God's presence, he saw, he saw the angels that were flying. These very angels, these seraphs, only mentioned here in Scripture. Possibly could be recorded in the book of Revelation, uh, another creature that possibly could. The only, the only place that name is in this text is in Isaiah 6. These seraphs meets burning ones. He saw these burning ones. And let's look at them this morning a little bit. They were, they were standing, although they were flying. The Bible said they were standing. Standing on air. Amen. Mm -hmm. And they had six wings. God designed them for their inhabitants. With two, they covered their face. With two, they covered their feet. With two, they flew. What in the world is going on here? These angels who are holy all by themselves do not dare look on God's presence. So they adore him. Part of that worship is honoring and adoring him and reverencing him. They cover their face. They dare not trod on the holy ground without covering their feet. How many of you need your face and your feet covered? Yeah. Yeah. Moses walked on. Moses went in the wilderness one day in the book of Exodus. Where his call came from. And there he saw a bush that was burning but wasn't consumed. He got near that bush and, a, and God spoke to the bush and said, Take your shoes off your feet. The ground you want is holy ground. Yeah.
That means not only is he can charge, he can also, he can not, not only create, he can destroy. Because yeah. mm -hmm. he's on the throne. Yeah. Amen. He can put up, he can also put down. Yeah. And guess what? Because he's in charge, he can also judge us. He can also decide what's right for us. Can you remember our very first parents in the garden? They were told what? Come on, y'all. Talk back to me. Not to do what? Not to eat of the fruit. Not to eat of that tree in the midst of the garden. They had one simple command, not to eat of the tree. Why would God give someone a command like that? Because God wanted man to know that although he had a free will, he had to use that free will to choose what God said. And we're still eating from the wrong tree. Too much. Aren't we still eating from the wrong tree, still being deceived by the enemy telling us that this is better for me over here? But I don't have a right to decide for myself what's right and wrong. God decides it. Yes. God said that they be there or you shall surely die. People are dying right now eating off the wrong tree. Amen. Deciding that this makes me happy. This is what I feel. This is what I want to do. Why is it? Because man has not realized there's one on the throne who we must be accountable to. Yeah. I want you to see him in position. He's not asking. He's not working. He's not trying to get voted in. And guess what? And whether we acknowledge him or not, he is still king of kings and lord of lords. Yes. Whether you believe in yes. him or not, he is still king of kings. You don't make him lord. He's lord whether you make him your lord or not. Amen. Amen. All I want to know is whose side you're on. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because on his side, he watches over you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On his side, he rules your life. On his side, you don't get to decide what's right and wrong. Yeah. On his side, you don't get to do what you want to do. His side, you, you accept his life for you. On his side, he's giving you purpose and direction. On his side, he makes way. On his side, he works our life together for your good. Amen. And he doesn't knock anybody's door down. Amen. Amen. But what he does is make an offer. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He's a gentleman. And guess what? He's such a gentleman that if you decide you don't want to serve him, he'll say, okay. <laughs> you decide you don't want to abide by his rules, he'll say, okay. Now look around the world. Let me tell you who's right and who's wrong. Mm -hmm. These are people that have decided they don't want to hear from God. Because they want what they want. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we're dealing with school shootings. Y'all yeah. come on, talk back to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The speaking. Therefore, we're dealing with legal drugs that used to be illegal in my day are about to be legalized yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we need more crazy people walking the streets? No. <laughs> Do we need to escalate crazy? Do we need more people walking with guns now high? Do we need more people driving on the under the influence of marijuana? Do you need somebody at your door trying to uh, come into your house more? Do you need to put the gun in hand of somebody who got munchies? <laughs> Robin McDonald's. Yeah. But yet we keep pulling destruction upon our own heads. Why? Because man refused to acknowledge there's one on the throne. Amen. Yeah. And then one on the throne is not just sitting there. He declares, the angels declare one to another one and say, holy. Holy, holy, holy. holy. Mm -hmm. Now he's not just holy, he what? He's holy, holy. Holy, holy. holy. He's not just holy, holy what? Holy, holy, holy. He's holy, holy, holy to the max degree. Yes. And when Isaiah saw the holiness, he realized he couldn't even sing with the angels. Mm. Come on now, somebody. And when these angels say, guess what? These angels repeated one to another. The, their, their voice was so boisterous that the very foundation and the, and the, 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 the doors of the temple start, of heaven started shaking. And if they could make an uproar, do you think God has been better to them than he's been to us? No. We want to sit back and say, praise you. <laughs> <laughs> but they praised the Lord to the place that the heavens were shaking. Shaken by that phrase. Amen. How does many know we ought to be making some noise? Yes. Amen. Has God been good to anybody? Yes. Has God been away from anybody? Yes. Is he your strength and your redeemer? Yes. Isaiah realized the best that he could get was his praise, but even his praise would be tainted by his sin. Mm -hmm. And know what Isaiah said his response was? He said, Woe is me. How are you going to respond to your woe? Woe is a 
word of judgment. Woe is a word of remorse. Bro, woe is a word. It's the opposite of being blessed. As Isaiah realized that my real condition now shows up. Why? Because I'm now in God's presence. And when you're in God's presence, your real condition shows up. Yeah. But you got to understand this. Many people don't want to get around with God. They want to hide in the leaves. They want to hide in the fig leaves. You know why? Because when God speaks, that means he may cause you to come out of something you're in that he doesn't like. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. When God speaks, he may change your mindset. When God speaks, you got to listen to what he's saying. He's saying that you're not Lord. Your society isn't Lord. Your culture isn't Lord. Your blackness isn't Lord. Your whiteness isn't Lord. Your Republican is not Lord. Your Democrats are Lord. Jesus is Lord. He ought to come to all people all these things. Amen. So to have the Lord as your Lord, you got to recognize this. This Bible starts, if you read the King James Version, you'll see that Lord, when, when Isaiah sees him, he talks Lord. He says L-O-R-D, capital L, no case O-R-D. That means sovereign. That's a title given to him. You read a little further down in the book, you'll see all capital Lord. L capital O R D. That means that he's the great I am. Amen. So L O R D, the writer, the translate, let try to let you see there's something else behind these words. So what's happening here? Isaiah, I want you to know the king has died, but the sovereign one still sits. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God a praise right there. Yes. And what does that mean for my life? That means for me, I don't have to worry about anybody. Not at all. I don't have to worry about a, a crooked supervisor, mm -hmm. a perverted judge, a tricky car salesman, a, 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 a thief or canal. But you know why? Because my Lord reigns. Yeah. Amen. I mean, I had to be threatened over my, my position. Many people fight because they feel threatened over uh, uh, someone else comes along and does it just a little bit better. That man who does it better, that is, what matters is that God calls you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. What matters is that it comes to a place in my life, i got to stop worrying about what I'm going to say and realize I'm on assignment. Mm -hmm. yeah. It comes to a place I don't worry about who's going to come and not come and realize I'm on assignment. All that stuff is secondary. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes. All that stuff is secondary. You're on assignment for the King of Kings and Lord of the angels. They cover their face, two wings. Can't look at the holy. Cover their feet. They, they don't deserve to trod in the presence of the holy of holies. But they have two wings of fly. So they have two wings of adoration and two, and they have four wings of adoration and two wings of serve. Mm. Amen. And guess what? If you don't have adoration, you're not ready to serve. Amen. Because our service ought to bring out of um, our adoration for God. Guess what? They don't, they don't need our sight. They can go by instinct with a fly because out of the face of the coat. They flying by. How many know sometimes you got to walk that way? Yeah. Walk by Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. You got to walk knowing that God is there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you can't yeah. see your way, but you just know all I know is God is there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't feel your way through. All I know is God is there. You can't figure it out. All I know is God is there. You don't have it all together. All I know is God is there. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that you come into the presence of a holy God. Amen. When you come into the presence of God, which is everywhere. Amen. He's everywhere. He's right here, right now. He's everywhere, but you acknowledge that presence. That means you want to live your life in accordance with that. Because you know what? These angels flew uh, around the throne of God because that was their assignment. They had two assignments to glorify their creator and to serve their creator. Mm -hmm. Hello? Y'all hear the two assignments? Mm -hmm. I want you to know you got two assignments mm -hmm. to glorify your creator and to serve the creator. Mm -hmm. And Isaiah's down here. I got to. Get ready to close. Isaiah's down here now. He's in our presence of holiness. He realized he doesn't really deserve. He said, I'm undone. Mm -hmm. That means he's falling apart. He's not worthy to be there. He recognizes that. He recognizes. He said, woe unto me. Because God's about to use Isaiah to declare woes on other people. But before he can declare woe on somebody else, he got to get his own woe. Mm -hmm. So before God uses us, he's got to clean us. Clean us. Yes. Yes. You, you gotta let it know. Yes, you gotta be the first one to come to this. Mm -hmm. And I realize that's what it's all about, y'all. All I'm doing, Daniel, I'm doing. I'm bringing you into my worship. Yes. When I'm preaching, I'm not. I'm not performing before you. This is what God and I do all week. Amen. We talk. We talk over the passage. We find out what the passage means to me in my own life. Then He said, "I want you to go and tell it." So what I want us to do today is be able to go in and see that presence so clear that we won't come out the same way. 
What come up realizing? Isaiah said, my mom, I want to, I want to preach uh, maybe after Mother's Day. I want to preach on hot lips. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got to come back for that one. Amen. Amen. Because Isaiah realized this, that he wasn't fit to speak on behalf of God. And how many know that's how God's going to save people? Through our lips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But you know what? We got to get on fire for him. We talked about it this morning in Sunday school. The tongues of fire set upon each of them. And they went out to do God's work. God still wants to set a fire on each one of our lives. Amen. Because God wants to use us for his glory. Isaiah's in there. He's in the presence of God. He realized he's undone. He realized that he doesn't belong there. But he, he realizes this. And what God does, he sends an angel. The angel. Maybe I'll preach a high lips today a little bit. He sent an angel. That angel flying around went to the altar and took with the tongue. That's how high it was. A coal for A coal for an altar. And flew to Isaiah and put it on his lips. Y'all say hot lips. Hot, hot lips. lips. <laughs> Amen. Because Isaiah confessed. You know what Isaiah said when he saw God's presence? He says, my mouth is dirty. Can I get a witness somewhere? Amen. 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 And he said, not only is my mouth dirty, the people around me got dirty mouths. So what did God do when Isaiah confessed? He said, help for the thing Isaiah confessed was wrong with him. See, we trying to fix ourselves. God fixes. Amen. The thing that God showed you not for you to fix you. The things God showed you is for you to let God and let him fix you. Yeah. Yeah. I know he can fix you. Yeah. Yeah. I know he can fix you. The stuff I struggle with, guess what? When I got finished struggling and saying, God, I, I, I just can't do this. You know what the Holy Spirit said in my heart? That's why I wanted you. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 You can try all you want to stop cussing. That cuss is in you, guess what? Come on. You can try all you want to stop stealing. But you know what? The thief's in you is going to come out. Mm -hmm. You can try all you want to stop lying. Guess what? The lies are going to come out. But until you invite the Lord in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Because you know what? Only he can change the heart. Yeah. Yes. 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 And some of that stuff got to be cauterized. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's got to be burned. Mm -hmm. And he took the tongue to the altar. Which means that there's a redemptive price. He said your sins are covered, your sins are forgiven, and you've been atoned for. You understand the throne is for God, the altar is for us. Amen. Don't ever forget that, amen? amen? The throne is for him to rule, the altar is for us to get it right. Yes. Now thank God. How many glad that God give you the opportunity? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> once Isaiah had been in God's presence, and once God had ministered to him through the angels, God says, who can I send and who will go for us? God says yeah. us, calls us of us. We talk about it another time. Who can I send now? And Isaiah said, What? He am I? Yeah. Send me. I wonder how many people we got in the house right now. Where did you go with you? God sent me. Amen. 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 Y'all follow me right now. Y'all sent me to the jungle of Africa. You might be saying it to your neighborhood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got people right next door that don't know the Lord. Exactly. Come on now, you got missionary. You got people in your job don't know the Lord. You got missionary right here. You ain't going to Africa anymore to go preach. Yeah, all. all right, you got co-workers, amen. You got, you, got, you got family members. You got people in your own house don't know the Lord. Amen. You got a missionary feel all around you. But you got to get to the place you realize, Lord, here I am. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He, 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 no. And, and you got to understand that when God asks a question, he knows the answer. But see, God ain't going to force himself on you. He's a gentleman. He's, so he want to know who can I send. Yes. I'm just saying, Isaiah, you're the only one here right there that's not an angel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, Isaiah, you're the only one here that, that, that had your, your lips ministered to. Amen. Amen. I didn't get fired your lips for no reason at all. The very place you said you didn't help with. You never hear Isaiah complaining about the fire of must have been a supernatural flame to be that high. Then him talking about my lips are burning. But you know what? His lips had to burn. The most sensitive part of your body, your lips. Yeah. Yeah. His lips had to be on fire. The very angel had to put tongues and put it there. But guess what? Isaiah was more concerned about his sin than he was his company. Mm. 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 Some of y'all get that next mm. He was more terrified of the fact of being in God's presence than he was his physical pain. Mm. And when we get to that place, 
We realize it's not about my comfort. It's about God's glory. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not about what I want to do. It's about what he wants me to do. Yeah. We get to that place. That's where we're growing. Yeah. We get to that place. We know we, got, we have an encounter with God. But God begins to rearrange our lives in a way we never thought possible. Yeah. Who would have thought we'd be here? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not concerned about numbers. We're concerned about God's being on God's assignment. Amen. Yes. Yes. God's going to take care of the numbers. Amen. Amen. Because we started what? The living room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now we're here in a beautiful movie theater. Yeah. yeah. Who knows what God has for us? Yeah. How many know you expect you can expect great things? Yeah. Don't despise, don't despise small situations. Don't despise that a few people can't do a whole lot. Amen. Amen. You ought to come down and see us, family. On the on the twentieth this month, and see what God does for what a few people. Amen. 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 You ought to come down the web page sometime and see what God does when thousands of people sign on to see and to hear what Kingdom Praise Men. Not because we're great, but because God is great. Amen. You know, God spoke my heart. As long as you seek to glorify Christ, I'll always open doors for you. Amen. Come on now, somebody. Yes, Hallelujah. As long as that's your motive. I'll always keep a door open somewhere. Amen? Amen. Because that's what the Holy Spirit that we talked about the Holy Spirit this morning. What the Holy Spirit does, he does not talk about himself. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. Amen. And the Holy Spirit in charge of your life, you will glorify him. Amen. You're not going to keep walking the way you're walking, living Amen. the way you're living, Amen. doing what you're doing. You don't want to be transformed. You don't want God to come in and change and rearrange your life. Why? Because the Holy Spirit in you won't let you stay like you are. Amen. Come on now. You like the Holy Ghost? Yeah. You don't have the Holy Ghost. He's not going to let you stay like you are. He's going to conform you into the image of Christ. You nasty now, but guess what? He's going to change you to nice. You're lying now. He's going to take you to be a truthfulness. Amen. You're cussing now. He's going to praise in your lips. Amen. You're lustful now. He will make content with what you got. Amen. Amen. That's what the Holy Ghost does. If he's in control of your life, he will have crisis like emanating through you in all ways. Now when the king of Zion died, the Lord is still lifted up. Yeah, what you know. going through in your life? Yeah. Amen. Because Isaiah couldn't really go to his next level until something died in his life. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Y'all get that? Yeah. Yeah. He, he, could, he said the year of Zion died, I also saw the Lord. So when God removes from you, it's not to destroy you, it's to make you look up. Hallelujah. Yes, Some of y'all not looking up yet. Mm-hmm. You're still, still looking at that. You're still looking around. Just trying to figure it out. Why? Because you don't realize there's somebody on the throne. Mm-hmm. And guess what? The angels didn't cry, love, love, love. Joy, joy, joy. Peace, peace, peace. Around God, pray, don't you cry? Oh, 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 oh. Why? Because God is separate all by himself. I don't mind it. Yes, Although he created all things, he's not a created shunt. Amen. Amen. Although he started time, time does not limit him. Do you realize when a thousand, a hundred years from now, none of us will be remembered? But guess what? He'll still be on the throne. Yeah. Your grandchildren, great grand, they would say, who? <laughs> How many of us can look back to three or four generations and know people's names and where they are and so forth? Very few people search out their history. So right now, everything means everything else. But you know what? Only what you do with Christ will last. Right. But we can pass on this godly heritage. That's why I'm excited on fifth Sundays. And I'm going into my, I guess, announcement now. I'm finished my preaching. On fifth Sunday, I'm excited because what we're going to do, we're going to use the young people in this church that we had, that God's given us, and they will take over fifth Sunday. Why are we going to do this? Because we got to get ready to move out the way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And we have to train the next generation. Yes. Amen. 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 We got to get them up here. It us out there. <laughs> That's what we got to do. So we use that for a transitional time. They're not the church of tomorrow. They're the church of today. Yes. Yes. We only got a few. But that's what we're going to use those few and, and best God until we stop looking around what you don't have and use what you got. Amen. 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 You faithful on a few things, I make the rule of men. We're going to use what we got. We're going to use sisters. We're going to use sisters. We're going to use you. We're going to use you, man. We're going to use, you, we're gonna use, we use the young people. They're going to be sitting in the lobby. They ain't doing what we're doing. Amen. We're going to be ushers that day. 
Amen. Bring them in here and let them do what God called them to do. Amen. To take yes. over the next generation. That's what we have to have vision for the yes. next generation. Yes. We get ready to move out the way and let the next generation come in. We want to have a representation of who Christ is. If you're not invested in your young people, you're not invested in the future of the gospel. Right. Yes. If my pastor never spoke a word to my life as a youngster, I wouldn't be here right now. Amen. He scared hell out of me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm telling y'all what he did. Amen. I heard him talk about a place I didn't want to go. Amen. A child, I didn't understand a lot, but I knew one thing. I didn't want what he's talking about. Amen. And I went on my knees. Y'all know my, young, my testimony, you know my testimony. I went on my knees. My parents didn't even know. I went by my tub in the bathroom and I got by that tub and I asked the Lord to come to my Lord, please. I was crying, Lord, please come to my life. Lord, please save me. And I was waiting for something to change. My hands didn't change. My, my feet didn't look. I was waiting for some, some, something to happen to me. But I looked and I realized that God saved me that moment. Y'all realize? I realized God saved me that moment as a child with my childlike understanding. As I grew and understand, I tried to fit into the world, but didn't do that. I tried to be cool. I tried to do the thing all the cool kids was doing. I was so cool, I smoked cool. <laughs> they still have cool cigarettes. I, I, I was so cool. We we just did all stuff just to be cool. And one day I remember as a teenager, I remember the teenager, and I was in the in the room. I had my liquor. I was hiding my bottles with my mother, hiding my liquor bottles, my pedometer, had all this stuff in my room, in my little room. Had all this stuff in my room. One day I I got almost drunk by myself. Everybody left the house. And while I was there, God made me face me. Wow. You ever had to face yourself? God made me face me. That was my encounter with God. The light came into the room. I didn't see a visible light, but God's presence came to the room and said, Mike, what are you doing? This is not what I made you to be. And until, so we talked a little bit last week, and until someone's willing to come out of the shadows and accept the woe in their lives, when the God comes on your life and says, this is not what I designed you to be, you don't want to hide in the shadows anymore. You want to drag out to life and say, God, transform my life. Until that happens, you're not let this account. And many people don't come because they don't want the world. They want to say, I'm all right. What was you for not accepting me like I am? What were you? Shame on you, small-minded, bigoted person. Shame on you for not being open-minded to accept me. And I tell you I'm this way, that's how I am. Accept me. Well, I'm telling you this is the way I am because God didn't accept me. Mm. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so one-sided. If I don't agree with you, then I'm your enemy. Mm. But why don't you agree with me? This is how I am, except me. Mm. I've decided to live for the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I've decided to make him Lord of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I decided to walk a holy life. Yeah. I decided I want to please God. So why are you mad at me? Mm -hmm. Because you know what? My life puts light. On your darkness. Ooh, Hello. My light puts light on your darkness. And instead of hating God, you hate me. Why? Because I'm living my, my truth. Yes. yes. It is not really my, my truth. It's his truth. Amen. Amen. And that's why the church is going to be hated. And that's why your friends are going to leave you. And that's why people are going to get angry with you when you say what truth is. Yes. They're going to think you're doing hate speech. You gotta read Jesus sometimes, talk to the scribes and Pharisees. He called them snakes. Yep. He called them hypocrites. Yep. <laughs> yep. This is the perfect man calling these things. So if, if, if God puts somebody to call names, liar, cheat, false prophet, uh, uh deceive, I'm gonna say, it, you know why? Because I'm following Jesus. Amen. Because sometimes you got to go in and turn the tables up. Sometimes you gotta hug and embrace and say I love it. Other time you gotta go and say, put the table up. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta put the table up and say, No, this is what God wants. My house is being called a house of prayer, but you're making it a dinner feast. Mm -hmm. You gotta speak truth to power. Yes. Amen. 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 It might cost you your life, like it did Jesus, but it never stopped telling the truth. Yeah. It may cost you some disciples, but you know what? He kept telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Everybody might leave, but you know what? You got to keep on telling the truth. Why? Because the truth will make people free. Yes. 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 Amen.
Amen. You keep coddling people. They're going to be trapped. And accepting that they are wrong and contending they're wrong and not speak to it, it caused John the Baptist's head. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Because uh, Hannah was married to his brother's sister, his brother's wife. And John kept telling him it wasn't right. And the wife said, I'm going to kill that man. But Harry said, I'm going to kill him. But one day, the daughter of Herod and the Herodess danced the dance. And the dance was so provocative and so wonderful, Herod said to his daughter, whatever you want, the half the kingdom will give you. You imagine somebody telling you I'm going to give you a half the kingdom? And she goes to her mom and says, Mom, what you want? Mom said, I want the head of John the Baptist. That's my hate head right there, y'all. All the half of the kingdom, mine, or John the Baptist's head, that's a real hate. You willing to give everything up to get somebody's head because they spoke what? They spoke the truth. The truth doesn't make you popular. But the truth honors the God who sits on the throne. The holy, holy, holy one. That's what it honors. So truth will cost you. But guess what? God promised never to leave you. Yeah. He said, don't fear those who kill the body. Fear the one who has the body's dead and has the power to catch you in hell. Mm. Yeah. 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 Amen. 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 That's the one you fear. How about that? Amen. Don't fear man. Because man doesn't have anywhere to put you. Don't fear that crooked boss. You go with this knowledge now. No matter who is in charge, I look above them. Amen. 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 And they can't do anything to you except God allowed them. God allowed us for your good. Yes. So in other words, when tragedy happens, guess where God is? On the throne. Come on, Mike. I was having a conversation with people, and they said, yeah, but who is it hurting? Who is it grieving? It's grieving God. Mm -hmm. We might sin and say, we're not hurting nobody, but it hurts him. It hurts, it hurts the one that created everything, the one that wakes us up every morning, put food on our table. He, he, he gives us the strength to make it to work. He, he created the job for us. Yeah. He he. he, he Creates a place for us to lay our heads down. He does so much for us. He gives the, the, the breath in our bodies, our ability to walk. Everything we take for granted. Lord, I can't say thank you enough personally. My dad brought up the, the time that the girl was giving us a speech. And she talked about her. her she was just a simple kid sitting in the backseat of a pickup truck. The seatbelt was straight across the waist and had a hard hit in the back. Seven or nine, she lost all ability to walk. And she was real young. She was a teenager. Just started off life. But from that time, you gave her a mission. She's the reason why you don't have seatbelts just, just going across the lap anymore. She, she became a lawyer. She fights for the rights for people that have disabilities now. You gave her a purpose. You made her pain her purpose. Me personally, I, I, I thought at that time I was the person known for going out all the time, being the life of the party, and you took away my legs. So I'll dance for you. You, you took the one thing that I, I was known for movement. You took away that movement. You, you, you humbled me so I could see you. It was only when I was in my darkest place that I could appreciate your light, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, I can't say thank you enough. Thank you for your correction. Thank you for the woes you sent our ways. So we can actually appreciate your light, appreciate your will. Appreciate everything you do for us. Everything you can change in us. Thank you for the correction, Lord. If it wasn't for your correction, we'll keep on walk, running to hell. Not just walking. We don't stroll there. We ran.
for darkness. Lord, please help us to draw more people toward your light, Lord. Help us usher them in a new way, your grace, your glory, your peace, your love, your joy, your long-suffering. I can't say thank you enough. I, I can't say that I've ever come across anything I can't handle with you. I've seen, I've seen some darkness, Lord. I've been through a lot of things, lots of trials I don't even talk, talk about. But you brought me through it all, Lord. Help me guide more people toward your light, Lord. Help us as a ministry guide more people to you, Lord. Everything we hand you, we know that you can multiply. Lord, we give it all to you. We can't say thank you enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. God bless you, family. May heaven's riches and blessings smile upon your life. Please, man, please, sir, those who are listening to us by way of Facebook, those who are in the room right now, please come before your Savior and let him deal with your life. Amen. Amen. Let him put his finger on those things that he wants to remove. Because he's not trying to take your fun. He's trying to re re free you from you Amen. so you can understand what real joy is. Real peace is real love. I'm not talking about something I... I heard or just read about. I'm talking about what I'm experiencing daily, daily walking with God. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you. If you have not yet done this, give your life to the Savior. Turn your back on the world. Turn your face to the light. And say, God, whatever it is you want to remove from me, now here I am. I want to be yours totally. As you turn from sin and turn to Christ, He will change your life from the inside out. Amen. God bless. I think about the song, Won't He Make You Clean Inside? I don't got a testimony somewhere. Won't he make you clean mm -hmm. inside? Amen. Mm -hmm. So God bless you, my family. We have the richest blessings to be upon your life. Um, come join us on Friday nights for our Bible study. We're going in deep, we're going in heavy. And uh, the first epistle of John, we're going in, we're looking at Greek words. We're going in, never before, going in to delve into the truths of God's word. Come join us um, in the first epistle of John. We read that epistle. We'll go back on our YouTube channel and our, and our Facebook page and look at prior messages so you can be up with us. As we jump right into it for next week, we're back here on next Sunday morning, and we're going to have our Mother's Day service on, I think it's next week. Yeah. We're ready for, to celebrate our moms on next Sunday, and then we're going to do some other things that I'll talk to you about later. But God bless you. May heaven's richest blessings be upon your life. God bless you. King Praise Ministry signing up.